Good evening, everyone. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight. And shout out to all my new uh, YouTube subscribers. I appreciate you. Um, and your sincere support of the stream and the content presented. Please be sure coming into the building that you hit the subscribe button and the share button. I appreciate you again as always. I trust that everyone has had a fantastic afternoon and evening <laughs> of which I say on every stream. Uh, Irregardless of the ups and downs, the negatives, the pitfalls, the detours that we encounter from day to day, I do trust that each one of you have had a fantastic and positive day. You know, it's all how we look at it. We're still here. You still have your family. You still have your life. And with the grace of God, you still have one more day to do it one more time. So, again, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I'm your host, Charles Chambers. This is another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. And we're going to get into a subject tonight with the loss of our beautiful, ambitious sister, Shanquilla Robinson, who lost her life October the 29th. And uh, unfortunately, many individuals who share the privilege of getting before the public and who have the privilege of getting before a camera and a microphone have shared a lot of false information which you've heard me say in other streams um i think time will speak to those that have done that for whatever reasons they did it for and i don't believe like i've said in another stream also I don't believe that many of them did it out of malice. I think we've simply fell victim to information that we could only receive, not having the resources to retrieve that information on our own. So information that was made easily available to us, we use that information in an attempt to get that information to you, the public to the best of our ability. I'm sure that many, if in fact they find that the information they shared was incorrect, they'll do the right thing by coming before the public the same way they came before the public with the information. They'll come before the public to retract false information that they have been, may have been guilty of sharing. So it's all right. I would say to give each and every content creator and each and every media outlet that may or may not have shared information that was not 100% correct, you know, give them the grace to be able to be imperfect and correct themselves later at a later date. Because guess what? I believe this. I believe all of us are looking for the same thing. I believe every content creator that has ever shared this story, however correct or incorrect, whatever sources they used to get that information to the public, I believe at the core, they meant to get this information to you from a genuine place because we all want justice for Shankola Robinson and the Robinson family for the heinous, heinous crime of what's now dubbed from the Mexican government as femicide. I know this is a new term that many of us are unfamiliar with. Femicide. I've never heard the term until this particular case, but I've since researched, I've since read what femicide actually means and it's equivalent to what we call homicide here except that it's isolated to a crime against a female as it relates to a man in particular but as it relates to a gender crime meaning the crime of homicide where a female is concerned 
It's a very, very serious crime in Mexico. Very, very serious crime. And then I did some research to find out why is it so serious. Because that crime is very, very prevalent in Mexico. So they created a law and put it into place that would give you the highest consequence for committing such a crime. So I, I get it, I get it. Again, I believe that we're all looking for the same thing. We're looking for justice for Shankola Robinson and the Robinson family. Any of you who hear my stream, whether you hear it now or you hear it later, um, those of you that have experienced the loss of a child, I'm sure that this case hits you very differently then it hits the general public who have not experienced such a misfortune. Those that have not lost a child, they may empathize with the case itself. But for those of us that have lost a child, literally, you and I, this case hits in a whole different way. You heard me mention in another stream, I lost a son March the 2nd of 2014. And he was in fact the same age as Shankola Robinson. They both lost their lives at 25 years of age. So this case is very different for me. I don't know how it is for anyone else who shares this information. But for me, it's very different very very different and uh, I will tell you this this is an ongoing situation that happens throughout our community and many others so many that you've never even heard of so many situations like this that has never hit the news media that has never hit social media. And these cases have long since died and today they are listed as unsolved cases. This is why I give so much salute and respect to every content creator and every media outlet that will take on the task of sharing this story because of the amazing influx of sharing this story, it has reached such a large mass of people, not just here in the United States, but it's reached beyond the borders of the United States and it's touched other countries. Everybody is reeling from this story. Whether you're black, whether you're white, or whatever your nationality is, so many people around the world are affected emotionally, mentally, and even personally by this story. So credit has to be given where credit is due. And I believe that credit is due, again, to every content creator. However, misinterpreted the story may have been, whether the information was 100% accurate, or whether the information was by supposition, assumption. Regardless, the story got out, and it got out in large numbers. And as a result, the end result of what we're looking for is to see justice had for this family and to see true justice had and realized for this family, for the death of their daughter, Mrs. Shanquella Bernada Robinson, who died October the 29th, 2022. As a recap, Shanquella Bernada Robinson arrived at Villa 32 
on October the 28th. In the early afternoon of October the 28th, she made a phone call to her mother, informing her mother that she had arrived safely. Her mother in short term said to her, I love you, give me a call later. That was the last phone call she received and it is the last time she heard her daughter's voice. That was October the 29th. Then Shaquella Robinson was born January the 9th, 1997. She would in fact be celebrating her 26th birthday next month. Instead, her parents have to have for her what we call a memorial because she is no longer here. Ms. Shanquilla Robinson uh, uh, graduated from high school. And from what I understand, she's a very good student. Very, very good student, very smart, had very good grades. Uh, she attended West Charlotte High School, where she graduated again with honor, honors. She then left West Charlotte High School and went to Winston-Salem State University where she again graduated with honors. Very intelligent young lady. She didn't stop there. She started a braiding company of her own. Very ambitious, had an entrepreneurial spirit. She started braiding hair. And for what I understand, she was very good and I've seen some of her work. And she made that braiding business exclusive to young girls. She didn't stop there. She went on to start a clothing line and she worked tirelessly doing photo shoots to promote her own clothing line. The name of that clothing line was Exquisite Boutiques. It was an online business and from what I hear and understand and look from what I've looked at, it was very successful. This trip to Cabos, Mexico, was, un, was nothing different than any other trip that she's ever taken. She's always traveled because she worked so hard. She has such a hard work ethic. And what do most of us like to do when we work very hard? We want to reward ourselves. She did nothing different. She went on trips a lot. She went outside the country a lot. What was different about this trip is she went with a group of individuals that she thought she could be safe with Yet this group was different than the group of individuals that had gone on trips with her in the past. She had a group of young ladies that she went on trips with. That was her group, you know, how we say, her clique. That was her group. But this time she didn't do it that way. She went with another group of individuals, not realizing. No, I don't believe she was even suspecting that she had anything to be concerned about. And if anyone gave her any pause for concern, it was Khalil, Khalil Cook, who she deemed as her best friend. Now, all of us have individuals that we grew up with that we consider to be our best friend. Many of us were unmistaken because they proved over time to fit that description. But some of us have made individuals our best friend only to find that they had been plotting, planning, scheming, and never had our interests, our best interests at heart. But because I believe Khalil was present, I don't believe she felt she was unsafe. Even if she suspected anything, I don't believe she felt still unsafe. You know? I know if I went on a trip and I had a best friend there, even if I felt some kind of vibe, I think my vibe and my uneasiness would be set at ease just a little bit if I knew there was someone there I had a strong familiarity with. Now why would she have such a strong familiarity with Khalil Cook? Why? Because they've been friends for five years plus. He's been on family outings with her mother, with uh, her sister. They've gone on trips together. He's eaten at her home multiple times. 
They shared each other's presence like close friends would. There was no reason for her to feel she was unsafe. Yet, in fact, she was and didn't realize it. What I'm going to talk about tonight, uh, folks, I want you to really pay attention. Because I'll tell you something. We can say, watch out for your friends. Pay attention to who your friends or who you call friends. And I've said that, but I want to append something to that. We can say that. When you believe you're safe, your guard is dropped. Your guard is dropped. So you're not thinking that you're in any danger. So even with your best discretion, you still, in fact, may miss something. I'm going to talk about tonight that thing that we miss. Because it could really truly mean the difference between your life and in fact, your death. It could in fact mean the difference between you getting physically hurt or getting, getting physically hurt to such a degree that you're near death. So we're gonna talk about that tonight. And uh, I want everyone in the chat room to put hashtag justice for Shanquilla Robinson. And I want us to keep pushing this story. Because I will tell you this, uh, me personally, I won't rest until I see justice had for her, until I see justice realized for her parents. Because she didn't have to die this way. I don't believe anyone's life being lost if they're an upstanding citizen, I will say it that way, should lose their lives to someone who cares nothing about life, no. But watching and looking at her history, looking at where she came from and looking at how she came up and looking at what she had accomplished and looking at where she was trying to go and looking at how fun spirited she seemed to be in that video where she was walking through the hotel looking for her friends and yet they had isolated her. Here she is paid for an entire trip and yet the host is not invited to some private gathering in the back of the villa. Ah, I find that very disturbing that she had to look for them. You would think they would have looked for her before going back there. But she found herself looking for them. Oh, I'm gonna get into it tonight. And again, I thank all of you that got on the stream tonight. I thank all of you that got on the stream tonight. I'm not gonna do any shout outs tonight. I wanna get right into it. And uh, I want you guys to listen to what I'm going to say in this stream because I will tell you this all of what we see and all of what we're seeing with this case it can affect you it could be you in fact it is you because like I've said in other streams until we get to a point as a people that a tragedy for one is a tragedy for all and it's not just some singular situation that took place with one particular individual in one particular city or in one particular state. That a tragedy for one is a tragedy for all of us. All of us. Until we get there in our minds and how we think, we are always gonna suffer the problems of individuality. There is no individuality. There is no individuality. 
Because I'll tell you, what happened to her can happen to your daughter. What happened to her can happen to your sister. What happened to her can happen to your mother. What happened to her can happen to you. We must get out of this individual thought process and get to a place where we can realize that one tragedy for one is a tragedy for all, male or female, where the black community is concerned. We have to get there. So we can get right into it. You see the stream tonight. The subject, Shanquilla Robinson, the sickness of envy. Let's talk about what envy does. Our people are dying at an extremely inordinate rate. And we are under assault at the hands of ourselves and at the hands of others who do not share our reflection. There is a growing fear of hatred building for our people in this country and around the world because of our behavior amongst ourselves and our behavior and the threat we display to others. Envy is one of the worst kind of spiritual diseases. It is so sad that people will hate you for what only God could give you. The envious person is really a devil in the flesh. No matter what the color of their skin, if your heart is poisoned with the disease of envy, you have become in your own person a devil. And the compassion, the real compassion that only a human heart can possess is gone. Shane Quiller Robinson's death displays this. Now, let's talk about it. The sickness of envy. As the door of success for any of us begins to open for you or I, I want you to bring, I want you to take something into consideration. As that door opens, another door also opens. What is that door called? That door is called is called envy. And what happens with envy to the person or persons that watch you succeed, the light that that person may have, meaning the goodness that was in them that you knew best, it begins to get extinguished as the envy increases within themselves. Just think about that for a second it begins to get extinguished as the envy increases within them towards you. We all must get to a place within ourselves. We can not only hear what a person says, but how they're saying it. And if you're not able to discern you won't listen carefully to not just the words, but the way the words are placed. Very important. Sometimes a compliment is disguised with an evil suggestion. Some of us have been victim of this. Many of us have done this ourselves. An example. Someone comes up to you and they compliment you on your outfit. They would say, oh, that's a sharp suit you have on. I love those shoes. Man, brother, where'd you get them shoes from? And you tell them where you got the shoes from and you tell them where you purchased the suit from and you, they may even compliment you on your haircut. And the minute they walk away from you, they begin to criticize the tie, criticize the suit, and criticize the shoes and begin to explain to the other individual who knew nothing. 
that the shoes were cheap or that the shoes were ugly and that they were just saying that to make you feel good. You would be surprised how many compliments are disguised with a low level of insult. But because you can't see it, you don't realize it. You don't understand how an envious person builds. It starts off with jealousy. It doesn't start off with envy. It starts off with jealousy first. And I'm going to go into that as we go forward. Sometimes, again, a compliment is disguised with an evil suggestion, as I said. And some of us have become victim of this. And I'm sure many of us who have, we know that. Understand this, though. Understand this, folks. Um, as disappointment grows, as disappointment grows, and as ambitions and desires are thwarted, what does thwarted mean? Thwarted means which to uh, prevent someone from accomplishing something. Okay, so as your desires and ambitions are thwarted or prevented from accomplishing something, social conditions are ripe for a destructive epidemic of envy. They all too often, the all too often human emotion. And understand this, envy is a human emotion. The all too often human emotion described by Webster Dictionary as the painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another person, joined with the desire to possess that same advantage. Oh man. But here's the problem to the individual that's jealous or envious. It's painful to them to see someone with something that they themselves wish that they had or that they desire therein lies the problem jealousy is unlike envy even though they're said in a way that seems to be interchangeable they're not they're two entirely different words i'm going to describe that to you jealousy is unlike envy Jealousy is based on love and focused on possessing the loved object at the removal of the rival. Ooh, I'm going to say that again. Listen, I'm going to say this again. Jealousy is unlike envy. Jealousy is based on love and focused on possessing the loved object at the removal of the rival but an envious person here's the difference the envious person that envy originates in hate and can be in most cases all consuming to that individual that has it even murderous in its envious people live in a perpetual state of anxious competitive comparison they continue to compare themselves with the individual that they're envious against and it's perpetual it does not stop again it's rooted in hate this is where jealousy becomes an adult jealousy is the infant envy is the adult version of jealousy. Follow me. But here's the thing. Um, envious people live, again, as I said, in a perpetual state of anxious competitive comparison. Again, folks, understand, they only focus their only focus completely from day to day where you are concerned if they're envious of you 
or jealous of you. Their only focus is on what you have and what others have around them that they themselves lack and they do this until they make themselves sick. That's why the title tonight, that's why you see the title tonight, The Sickness of Envy. Envy grows to hatred and hatred grows the seed of murder. And once hatred is truly formed, it makes it easy for the individual who's jealous and envious to take the life of the person that they hate. It makes it very easy for them to do that with no remorse, with no compassion. As we saw in the video clearly with Shankola Robinson. I didn't see any remorse. I didn't see any compassion. I saw nothing like that. And I'm certain that if you have eyes like mine, you saw the same thing. They didn't pause, they didn't stop, they didn't slow down to see in fact, if she was injured to the point where perhaps she could have lost her life. No, I think they continued beating her and beating her. And I want to get you to understand what you were looking at. You weren't looking at a beating. You were looking at hatred. You were looking at envy. You were looking at jealousy and the sickness thereof. That's what you were looking at. With every punch, it was I hate you. With every single punch, it was with I'm jealous of you. With every punch, it was with I'm envious of you. And when you're consumed that way, when a person is consumed that way, they don't have the necessary bricks to stop themselves. They continue until it's complete. It's only today, and it's only right now, thanks to this story getting so much publicity, so much exposure, that today, when their emotions are calm, that they realize the gravity of their actions. And I will tell you, like I've said in every stream, I hope, I pray, they rot in a dusty Mexican jail, no doubt. I don't have any compassion for them. And uh, I will tell you, why should I? And why should you? They didn't have any compassion for her. They had no compassion for her mother. They had no compassion for her father. They no had no compassion for her sister. They had no compassion for anyone who loved and cared for her. They took her life blatantly with no compassion. So I would love to ask you why, if you in fact have any ounce of compassion, why would you have it? We say hashtag justice for Shane Quilla Robinson. That's what we say. What do you say? Let's continue. As an envious person will take your life, they will betray you also as well before it gets to that point. They'll betray you. They'll hand you over to your own enemies, the people that you don't like and the people that don't like you, <laughs> just to see you in an uncomfortable position. <laughs> that would be the objective, to see you in an uncomfortable comfortable position. That's why they'll do it. This is what an envious person and a jealous person will do. Because they hate, uh, they hate you. Not for being a bad person. And you know, I'll stop right there. I can tell you for a fact that individuals that suffer the consequences, the unfortunate consequences, 
that our sister experienced, she didn't suffer because they were ignorant of who she was. They knew she was a good person. They did. They also knew that she wasn't a fighter. They knew that also. They also knew that she was absent of drama. See, an ambitious person, male or female, they know how to separate themselves from drama. They know how to separate themselves from ignorance. They know how to separate themselves from all of the negative behaviors and attitudes that could hinder them in their pursuit to be successful. This is what she attempted to do. She was so successful as she was. There's no way in hell that she hung with individuals the likes thereof of a Dejanay Jackson or Winter Donovan or <laughs> the list just simply goes on. You know that these are not the individuals she hung with on a continuous basis for her to be as successful as she was. No way. She gave a pass for this particular trip. And in turn, because she knew that they couldn't pay for the trip, she paid for it out of her pocket. $1,300 a night for that villa. With all the bells and whistles attached to that trip. And she took along individuals that may not have had the resources that she had. That tells you what kind of heart she had. That tells you what kind of person she was. And let me tell you this. If this is I'm describing you then the ones that's around you, they know exactly what kind of person you are too. Watch your circle before they hurt you. Again, they knew she wasn't a bad person. They knew this. They knew this absolutely, without doubt. But what you have and what you've accomplished it's not good enough to simply give you praise for it no they want to take what you have that is what it does it makes you behave like a sick person again the subject tonight shanquilla and the sickness of envy this is what we're talking about tonight folks and again, I want to shout out to all of you that got on the stream tonight. Thank you. Don't forget coming into the building. Hit that subscribe button and hit that share button. Let's get this information out. Let's do what we are capable of doing from where we sit. Simply by making sure and ensuring the fact that this information gets out. Regardless of who delivers the information, let's do our part by doing that. It's easy, and I will promise you this, it's free. Hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, let's get this information out. And again, I sh want to shout out to all the new subscribers uh, to my channel. I appreciate you. And for those of you on my Facebook group that are not familiar with my YouTube channel, it's Let's Talk About It Now on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, I'm sorry. Let's Talk About It Now. Go on and look your, look your brother up. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. Let's keep this thing going. I'm going to do my very gut-wrenching best going forward to make sure I give you quality content. Um, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I desire to do. Again, I thank you all for getting on the stream tonight. And it goes on to say, you will... Um, this is what they do. They want to take it from you and they can't take it if you are succeeding above and beyond where they are. They want to get you to a place where you cease to exhibit the qualities that they find themselves unequipped with. You know, and it's impossible for them to exist with you being present with those same qualities. I said in a previous stream, I said, you know, 
I said, there are individuals that are so poisoned with this sickness. They would literally rather die themselves than to see you succeed. And it's really a sickness that you can't cure by trying to be friendly with them. It's not a sickness that you can cure by buying them things. You can't smile this sickness away. You can't buy this sickness away. There's nothing good that will be good enough that will make this kind of sickness go away. You just can't do it. I mean, we see it everywhere throughout our community. Mrs. Shanquilla Robinson is one case. It just so happens to be a case that got national attention. But make no mistake about it. There's so many, so many Shanquilla Robinsons around this country and outside of this country that have never gotten this kind of attention. I am thankful that we were able to give Mrs. Salahandra Robinson, her mother, and her father, Mr. Bernard Robinson, I'm very thankful that we were able to give them the kind of attention that this case needed. So perhaps her family can see the justice that they so desperately desire realized. Um, I believe every content creator, as you've heard me say in other streams, I believe we have a responsibility. If we've been given the privilege of a platform to speak, that we speak true words and that we speak what we know. And outside of what we know, we make a declaration of opinion by saying it simply was just that, an opinion. Because we don't want to be victim of doing anything to disturb, disrupt, hinder, detour, any part of this investigation, to slow it down in any kind of way. Because, so, because of so many different narratives that are being painted by individuals who have the privilege of getting before a camera and a microphone to talk about this particular case. I think the responsibility is that have that privilege and who have a platform. I want to see justice for this family. Um, from what I understand, to, uh, this Saturday, there will be a public rally. I believe it will be in Charlotte. Um, I will be looking deeper into it. I'm pretty sure it was going to be planned for Charlotte where they're going to have a rally in response to this case of getting justice for Shankola Robinson and the Robinson family. For those of you in the Charlotte area that hear the stream, um, it, would be nice, it would be good if you got yourself over there to show that support. For those of you that were just, in, just a few miles within Charlotte, it would, be, it would be fantastic if you just got yourself over there to show that support. And I believe we should continue doing exactly what we're doing in terms of keeping this story alive. Keep her name in everybody's head, regardless of their nationality. And I believe this is how we get real results. All too often, situations happen with us in our communities, and we just simply don't talk about it long enough. We, we just don't talk about it long enough and we don't show the passion of getting the real justice that we desire long enough. I think if we did that, we would find ourselves getting more results than we've gotten in the past. Everybody anticipates the time frame as to how long black folk will protest, how long black folk will be upset. <laughs> and how long we'll push for marches and things of that nature. And uh, usually 
those anticipations, those anticipations turn out to be correct because we don't protest long enough and we don't press long enough. Things don't happen as fast as we think they should. Many of us begin to fall off to the wayside. I would say this, if we learn to endure, if we learn to exercise a little patience, and if we learn to simply put the justice system and law enforcement officials to the test, to do their job, not withdrawing the pressure, no, keeping the pressure applied, keeping the pressure applied. But if we simply learn to exercise that and keep that pressure consistent for a long extended period of time, I believe if we learn to do that, we will find the results for justice that we so desperately seek. You know, and uh, with that being said, I think all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I do. I really do. And I want to continue to be a voice for this subject because uh, I want to see her get justice and I want to see her family get justice. And I don't believe I'm going to stop talking about it, to be quite honest with you, until I see that. Um, you heard me say that on a previous stream. Um, there's a lot of content creators, so if you want a different subject, yeah, choose your content creator. But me, I'm going to keep talking about this case until I see somebody in handcuffs. Handcuffs. I want to see mug shots. <laughs> You know, I, I want to see them walking out of some specific location with their head down. You know how they try to block their face from being seen by the camera. I want to see those kind of shots. I want to see them go to jail. All of them. All of them. Because all of them played a part in this beautiful, ambitious young lady's life being stolen from her and being stolen from her mother and her father and her sister and all of those extended family members that loved her. She was robbed, stolen from them. I have a problem with that and I'm going to talk about it until I see justice had. And I know many of you are with me on that. I'm positive you are. Hashtag justice for Shane Quilla Robinson. I want to give some shout outs for those of you that are on stream tonight. Shout out to Abdul. Shout out to Victoria Martin. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. And shout out for those of you that I miss. Shout out for those to those of you that I miss. You are appreciated. And with that being said, I am your host, Charles Tamlis. This has been another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. With that being said, we are out. Have a blessed night, what's left of it. Have a blessed day tomorrow and a blessed afternoon. I look forward to seeing you guys Friday night. God bless. Have a good night, folks. Thanks for getting on the stream.